Hello, welcome to Cracking the Cryptic, and we're keeping up the bonus content, two puzzles a day, while we're in lockdown. So I hope you can enjoy this one. Now, um, this is an interesting puzzle with some interesting rules. This comes from Greg Rogers Powers, who sent us examples of a number of puzzles of this type that he's been creating. This is Odd Pentomino Sudoku. And the rules are that, as well as normal Sudoku rules, in each of the shapes with grey cells in, the grey cells are the odd numbers. Sorry, in each of the boxes with grey cells, the grey cells are the odd numbers. Now, in all the other boxes, and there are seven of them, the grey cells form a different pentomino. And I'm putting up the um, list of pentominoes for you to see. Don't worry about the numbers on them. Um, the letters I might use in the descriptions, I'm almost certain to, I would have thought. Um, and the idea is that the constraints on using different pentominoes for the boxes is going to make this an interesting solve. And I would imagine that's going to be the case. Um, different means that um, even if a pentomino is rotated or reflected and is still the same pentomino, you can't use it twice. So there can't be two examples of the L pentomino, for instance, even if it was facing different ways. Okay, so let's get cracking and see how we do. Well, you can obviously try the puzzle um, on the link below the video uh, before watching myself. So there's some nines that are useful. I can place a nine in the grid straight away. Um, I imagine that one of my first things that I'm gonna do is start coloring the grid in odd and even colors. Now, where can two go in this row? Two must go here. So I'd like to get a few numbers in the grid so that I can get quite a lot of coverage done. Well, well we know that these are the even squares, so this one must be a four because four is there. So these are two, six, and eight. The first one can't be two. The last one can't be six because of these numbers. Now up here, this one is two or eight. This one is four, six, or eight. This one is four, two, or eight. And this one is two, six, or eight, I think. So we know that six is one of those. So six must be here somewhere. Um, one must be in one of those. I'm putting marks in the corners of cells now to show within a box where a number is restricted to. Six must be in one of those. Um, four, two, one, seven, six. What else have we got? Okay, what I'm gonna do now is mark I think I'll mark odd cells green as I was doing yesterday when I was coloring a grid for a different purpose. So let's have a go at this. These are all the odd cells. Let's, I'll Basically, I'm not gonna do the two cells that are colored or the, the 10 cells that are colored already. So I'll do the others, the ones that are white that I know their parity I'm going to color. So these ones I'll make even red, like yesterday. Okay, so we know those are like that. Now, because the green cells always have to make a pentomino within each box, they can't be isolated. So this seven here in the central box, this can't be red next to it, because otherwise that seven, that green cell couldn't connect up within the box. So that's got to be green. That's actually quite helpful. We know that that's five now, and this one's eight and red, therefore. Okay. Um, this hell has to be green, so the one in the corner can connect. This one has to be green, so the nine in the corner can. Okay, that's interesting stuff that we might not have got otherwise. Now in this box, um, 
for the greens to be part of a pentomino, they've got to attach to two more. Now, whichever way that works, this green, this one has to be green, and this one can't be reached, so that must be red. Um, but we don't know that that's one, because this could be one and that could be nine, and that would form a valid shape. The P pentomino. Um, what else can we find out? Ah, well, there's got to be, look, we've got two here and two here. So there has to be a two in these three cells. That one's odd. This one's above a two. So this is the two and is red. Okay. Um, what else can we achieve, if anything? Oh, look, that cuts this green one off unless this is green next to it. And now we've got four of the five shapes in this pentomino. So it could either be a W pentomino or an L. Um, no, I thought I'd seen something else. So two is in one of these places. Okay, put it in the corner there. Ah, oh, six and six, that's been available from early on. We can put a six in down there. And that's red. Now that's useful as well, because this cell has to be green to let the three in the corner into the pentomino shape. That's nice. Um, and look, in this row, row eight, we've already got four reds, and that's the maximum. So we can green everything else. Um, good. Now, what else can we do? It's a tricky puzzle, isn't it? Two, six, nine. I'm just wondering if the if one should. Hard to tell whether you should focus on the numbers or on the the colours a bit more. Um. Ah, looks okay. I, got to try and remember that the grey cells count as green. So we need five green cells up the central column. So that's green and that determines the shape. Now that's very useful because it also tells us where the one goes. So the one has to be there and that's a nine and we've got a T pentomino in the centre. That's useful down here because this cell can't be green because we'd get another T pentomino. So it's either it's either one of the other two possibilities, but we don't know which. One of these is red, one of these is green. Hmm. So this is four and eight in some order. Um It's tricky. It's tricky to work out what's going on next. Um, what else can we do? There's a three in one of these. Ah, oh, actually that is good. That gives us a three here. Yes, in row eight there is only one place for a three, so it has to be there probably three there but it could potentially still be there so I can't fill that in but I can put it in the corners um, four, two, seven, three, six, nine is in one of those two as well it's two one sevens in one of those two hmm where are we going next Five, one, nine, this. Ah, yes, this is now a seven because it's an odd number and it's looking at three, nine, one, and five. So that's a seven, that's that's a three. We can get rid of the three in the corner there. Seven must be in one of those two. Nine must be in one of those two. That's because of the seven there and then the nine there. Um, it's interesting stuff, but... Oh, and look, two here and two here work very nicely to rule out lots of that box. So two goes in here, and we can put a red color on that as well. 
this is getting quite restricted. Now, this cell can be five or eight. One of those is even and one of those is odd. If it was, oh, this is, yeah, look, if it was eight, if this was red, that would be four reds in the row. That would determine that this shape over here would be a W pentomino. That would make this one, yeah, if, the, if this one on the side was red, so we'd have green here and green here because we need five greens in the row. This would be a W pentomino, so this would have to be a P pentomino because it couldn't be another W. And down here, we couldn't have a pentomino that wasn't W or P, given these three greens and those two reds. There's no way. If, if there was a green cell here, it would have to be a P pentomino. And if there was a green, the only way to avoid a P pentomino is to have a W. That's amazing. This cell decides its parity by ruling out that being a W and that being a P. So this cannot be red. This is green. And it's five. We know that. That's the only odd number that can go in there. And this cell must be green now so that this box can have a pentomino in, an F pentomino. That's lovely. I don't know if that's intended to be the solution path. There might be other ways, but it's a really helpful spot. Now, I've just made this cell red so it can no longer be seven. So the seven must be there. That's a five, three pair. Um, ah, eight must be at the top here with six. That's a six, eight pair. So that sorts out the four and the eight in the central box. This is where three goes now. Can't go there. We've got nine and four to put in the central row. So obviously nine here and four here. What a brilliant puzzle. Now four in this top box. There must be a four in one of those. In fact, we now know where that is. That's here. Um, and that means four in this box must be in one of those two cells. Uh, that's putting a four over here. Let's make that red as well. Now, what shapes have we ended up with? We've had T originally, F and L now. Okay, cool. Um, This is just fascinating how this works together. But we still don't know which of these is red along the bottom. Um, three though, given these threes, actually probably for ages I could have put this three in, but I'm doing it now. Uh, not that three, three there, sorry. Um, that gives us a three in one of those two. I loved that breakthrough. That was so clean and immune. Oh no, nine, because of nine there, nine must be in one of those two. So not in this cell. In fact, nine must be here. Again, that's probably been, well, it's been available since we got that nine. So that's green too. Um, now, I was expecting to do a bit more kind of cell coloring before now. But it's been harder than I thought. I thought we'd get lots of rows and columns where... The, oh, look, there we go. There's four reds in there, and they've probably been there for since we put that four in. So we can put more greens at the top. And now we're getting an interesting shape here. Now... OK, remember that we can't copy another pentomino. What one does that look a bit like? The one we've put in here, the F pentomino. So this cell can't be green. That's got to be red. Now we've got all the reds in that row, so we can make the rest of them green. Now we know where the P pentomino is. It's up here. The rest of the cells there are red. Hurrah. And now we're starting with a shape a lot like this one. 
can't be a T because we've had that in the center. So this is red and that decides this is green because in the row we need it. And that's great because now that S pentomino shape can't be repeated here. And I think we're finished with parities. We know where everything goes. That's green because there's four reds in the column. Same is true there. This last one must be red. So let's finish off the even digits first. Um, two, six. So these two are four and eight in some order. So that means this one is six. Eight down here for the box. Six here for the column. That six has also sorted out our eight six pair here and we can put in eight for the column there. Two for the column there. Eight for the row there. We've got two and six to fill in here. There's a six in column six already. So now we can finish off this box. I love how this works together. It's so, it's so neat. Two and four. I think Greg's onto something with this, this idea. It makes for a really interesting solve. Now, um, Five can't be here, so five's in one of these cells, and therefore in one of those at the bottom, and in one of those in row eight. Ah, seven, that's useful. That can't be in those two, so seven's there, that fixes the five. One there. Seven and five to go in along the bottom, okay. One and nine to go in row seven. This is five and seven here, so that's straightforward. One now seven five one to go in the top. Very easy to complete each column. One there and seven there. We can finish off the row. Three and five here. Yep, we're just finishing off now. So that's a really nice puzzle. Um, I enjoyed that. I would happily do another like that. Um, you do, it does help to have some previous experience of the pentominoes, like I can kind of visualize them in my head anyway. And in fact, that's what I've been doing. I haven't been able to look at the list. So, but it didn't really matter for me, but that's a nice idea. You can see why Greg can't make a puzzle with nine different pentominoes in because there's only eight of them, but he's come up with a very neat way of showing the odds in the other cell, in the other boxes and creating creating a very interesting puzzle type i like it a lot thanks very much to greg thank you for watching and really we hope you stay safe um, during these troubled times but thanks for watching i hope to see you again soon on cracking the cryptic bye for now